there and this is when you just see the curtain call open up from the back and you're like wait how did he get there hello guys tweets here today i'm gonna be watching and ranking the best flanks of all time sent in by you the fans of course so let's get the show going Make a big play, and that's what they're going to be looking for as he's keeping in very far behind. Jerkson coming in to try to make some sort of a flank happen, but Cloud9 has the opportunity to still do something before he makes his way into the fight. Smoothie's going to be the target, taken very low. Ultimate keeps him alive for now. Hello. A lot of damage on Cloud9, and here comes your janitor, baby! Mop and Bucket at the ready. It's Bjorkton on cleanup duty. Sinskara's going to be taken low. Sneaky's going to be taken down. Zazel drops next. Sinskara with the flash away, but Bjorkton is spinning that combo all the way around. I remember this play uh, very dearly to my heart because I was playing on Academy uh, and this was the, the huge flank from Bjergsen here on Akali where he just absolutely demolishes C9. I was playing under Smoothie and Sven here so I remember this one this one dearly. It comes to Janitor Bjergsen. Oof, this Akali did a lot of damage, wow. I mean obviously just a clean flank from Bjergsen. He was really good at this, he was always... Uh, the first one to spot wards behind enemies and kind of pounce an opportunity, so it's a huge play by Bjergsen, obviously. So I think I would end up ranking this play probably in B tier, I would say. Uh, I think it's it's a good flank and it's well executed, but it doesn't like stand out, you know, it doesn't have that extra crisp. I think the only thing that makes it stand out is when they did it, uh, when they were 0-2 down and it was a huge play to come back. But outside of that, mm, well played Bjergsen, but not quite there. I think for me, what made uh, playing with Bjergsen really special was his decisiveness outside of the game and his passion for the game and kind of the drive he had. Um, he was always the person who tried the hardest outside of uh, scrims to improve at his craft and kind of get everyone on the same page. So I think for me, that was the most impressive because I've had a lot of good teammates who are very talented in-game, but I think Bjergsen was one of those players who was also very talented outside of the game, uh, trying to get everyone on the same page and kind of rallying the troops, so to say. So that was the most uh, impressive for me. Fun here, my friends. Bam is out of the picture once more. Yagao is here, but one versus three is not where Galio needs to find himself. Justice Punch away, keeps alive yet again. Bin trying to wall. chase this up, but where is that? What? It's Jin! He's in the base! The base! Behind the curtains with the curtain call! Everybody is done, man. Huanfeng is legendary. They pick up the last two kills. I tell you what! This is when you just see the curtain call open up from the back and you're like, wait, how did he get there? <laughs> this is one of the craziest plays I've seen from an AD carrier. And I think, I mean, this this play is almost so good that it got named after him. The Huanfeng AD carry flank. I've heard Tactical talk about this one as well. It's it's a crazy play. You're just wondering how we ended up there. I think what makes this play really fun is that you can see Huanfeng on mid lane, right? And instead of just regrouping with his team kind of through the jungle safely, he just walks into the base and goes for the flank from the base. I mean, I don't know what he was thinking here. I mean, I respect it. Uh, <laughs> he got a really good angle with his ult. But this was, this was a crazy one for sure. I think for me, ranking this one's pretty tricky. I would say it's either S or A tier. Um, it's up there in terms of the biggest flanks of the of, uh, of the century for League of Legends. So I think I'm gonna put it S because I really like it, to be honest. So I think I'm gonna do it. I do remember playing uh, Sooning and Among Us in Worlds 2020. I think uh, in general, Among Us was just really popular back then. Uh, and I remember we played against G2 as well uh, when I was on TSM. Um, I remember that uh, Sofum killed Spika in Among Us, and that was that's a big, uh, big boom for our team. I uh, couldn't believe that he would do such a thing. Uh, but in general, I think we didn't actually finish uh, finish the game. I think they just kind of had a quick uh, stab and then <laughs> left the game, so to say. Wow. Okay. Well, Showmaker is now very low on health. As Peanut's going to face check, but he can do that. Tidal wave comes through. Doc Dom looking for his opportunity. Moonlight Vigil is going to find nothing. On the flank is Canyon Bear. Oh, 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 the scan of the week. Dom and Kia, they found it one more time. Chovy, he goes golden, is now Peanuts trying to do it. Can Chovy get there? Dom Dom needs to know he's not going to. And Dom and Kia, they may have found their way back in and they might have just won the series. So this is from Last Worlds 2020. Dom and Kia versus Genji. And this is the, the famous uh, Canyon uh, on the cane here. With a three-man W into Showmaker QE on three people, absolutely crazy. 
I think this one obviously has a lot of uh, importance because of the when it was in the tournament as well. I think if I'm not mistaken, this was on the semi-finals or quarter-finals. Uh, so, I mean, just a crazy play because obviously Kane was not played at all during this time. The Canyon special um, and he makes it look very OP. I think since we're talking about flanks um, and kind of the concept of pressure in general in the league, I think this is a very good example from Canyon, how to utilize uh, pressure. Uh, especially when you're playing Kane, you can obviously run through the walls with your E, so him pressing on the left side while his team is uh, pulling towards the right side here is, is creating a lot of pressure on Genji, which leads them into walking up here on mid and kind of being out of position, so to say. So I think in general, if you're looking to have a flank, you have to think about what spells you have and what they have and kind of how you can pincer with your team on the correct timings. Um, and down on pincer, Pincer Genji really well here all at the same time and Canyon leading it with this uh, W there obviously. But if I had to rank this play I would uh, definitely put it uh, in S tier. I think uh, watching this live it was one of those what the hell just happened moment. Um, I still remember watching this uh, and just being like in awe at uh, how much uh, Kane could do <laughs> in the competitive. I think what makes Canyon so good is kind of his uh, individual prowess on every champion. It almost feels like every champion that Canyon locks in, he's just the best in the world at, or at least one of the best in the world at. So sometimes junglers have like two or three preference picks, but for Canyon, it feels like he has kind of an endless pool of champions where he's really insane at. So in every game, it doesn't matter. You can't really ban him out. He will have his pocket cane, or he will just 1v9 on Sejuani. He's just that type of player. So I think that's what makes him stand out uh, from the crowd. The greatest jungle and mid combos to all esports history. I mean, the first one that pops to mind is Faker and Bengi. I think that's that's kind of like a clear one. I think Showmaker and Canyon are 100% up there though. I think they're, they've now showed for multiple years in a row that they're up there as well. Um, if I had to go further than that. I mean, there's for, there's so many Chinese mid jungle combos that are just insane. Uh, I mean, I would just say number one for sure, Faker and Bengi. You gotta pay respects uh, for sure. They're gonna fight for it. Bin's resetting to TP. No, it's gone. It's gone. That's it. That's Dragon Soul. Oh, but as they back out, as they back out, they're not put together. You've got Gangplank on the flank. Gangplank. One big shot, Bin. Can you do it? Huge. My God. One moment. One shot. One barrel. That's all you need. Suiting. They find their shot. They find their fight. And that's it. So here we have the Worlds 2020 game. Suiting versus G2 with the Bin flank. GP is not one of the champions that you always see flank, but here he comes from Fog with the two barrels in a row on the carries, just completely one-shotting them. I mean, this is one for the G2 history books. They have a few moments where they get one-shot by champions, uh, and this one from Ben was uh, no different. I think what makes this play really special to me is kind of how he uses Fog of War. Uh, they don't understand that he's TPing right now, they haven't really realized yet. And then he comes with the ult, still in Fog, and then Barrel from Fog. And then Q flash on the second barrel to pop it. I think he just used the... Uh, how do you say it? He, he kind of used the, the surprise factor to the absolute max here. I think landing a barrel from Fog as GP is kind of the best feeling you get as the champ. Uh, and he got one of those and then the Q flash on the second one. So just insane damage as well. He crit both of them. Just absolutely one shot G2. I think for me this bin play uh, definitely is a god tier play. Um, it's one of those plays where... G2 will definitely remember it uh, for the rest of uh, their career and everyone else will also remember it. So it's just kind of an iconic play. So I'll put it on gold tier. They're getting a third mountain Drake. They already got the first Baron. That was huge for them to actually get a bigger gold lead. They're saving the Drake for now. They got two already. Bang is hiding. He's coming. Bang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. They're right through. Oh my god. Dr. Shockwave will find them all. And that's with a hell of a response, will take down four. They did it. They fought back from a 9,000 gold deficit and won a team fight against all expectations. So this is the, the mega banger of SKT versus EDG when SKT is down 10k gold. And this was in the era of League where if you knew that SKT were down 10k gold, you probably knew that they would win. You didn't know how they would win, but it always felt like they found a way to win. So. In this play, we have uh, SKT Wolf on the Rakan flank. That's a legendary one. For me, it's almost like I didn't even remember that Rakan was played this long ago. I feel like it's a newer champion. Um, but this is when his combo is really fast as well. And you see here Wolf with a flash WR into the four-man shockwave into knockup. Absolutely clean. 
and the cast on display as well is absolutely legendary. I just I just find it crazy how fast this Rakan combo was compared to this one and how quick SKT are to pull the trigger together. I think that's something you almost don't see in League nowadays either. Uh, just a team kind of sending it together at the exact same time. If we rewatch this again, I think Wolf going in, Faker going in with the Shockwave, Peanut going in the EQ ult. That's that's a wombo combo if I've ever seen one. Absolutely beautiful. I think the for me as a Rakan enthusiast, seeing the flash WR kind of makes me nostalgic. I, I miss doing that instead of having to R and then wait for your uh, W uh, in the lockout animation. So when you had this engaged on Rakan, you felt absolute god mode, and Wolf made the made the most out of it in this play. 10k goal down, but four man wombo combo equals win. You know, absolutely beautiful. If I had to rank this play, it's definitely gonna go in the god tier. There's no way this doesn't go in the god tier. Especially on Rakan, right? I, I have to I have to put it in god tier. So when I started League, I didn't really main support. Uh, I played kind of every role uh, in challenger level, because at that point, when you played solo queue, you had to kind of write your role to get it. Uh, so I would fill a lot of the time where, for example, if I had Froggen on mid lane, I wouldn't ask for mid. I would kind of give my role to, to the pro players in that sense. So I kind of just ended up filling every role. Um, and at that point, the support I looked up to the most was Madlife. Uh, he's, I think, probably the first one that made me go like, wow, support can actually do a lot of a lot of cool plays. So you cannot only do them on jungle or mid, etc. So for me, I would say Madlife was definitely one of them. And then watching the SKT kind of supremacy and all, and their insane team fights together, I think just watching Wolf as well, like this last play, really made me hyped for support. And I think. That's something where I think a lot of support players started out playing in their role, but then they were like, ooh, support actually has a lot of cool playmaking, um, and then end up on support. So for me, I would say it was uh, Madlife and Wolf. I think because it happened pretty recently, I think uh, my flanks against Vitality on SK in summer 2022 uh, were really hype, uh, because we pushed Vitality out of playoff contention. <laughs> so I think for me, in general, I was playing Rakan, I remember, and I got like two or three really good engages. Um, kind of caught them off guard on the flank and I remember everyone flamed their AD carry but in my head I was just thinking guys like I just set up a good flank right like I, I have to get some praise too right uh, so I think every time you flank on Rakan it feels really good and I remember uh, SK versus Vitality summer 2022 there, there were a few of those So thank you guys for watching these amazing flanks with me, uh, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, let me know how I did in the comments, did I flame someone too hard maybe, was I too nice, uh, let me know and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one, take care.